Um, on behalf of my co-authors and HIFNAP 006 um, study team, I would like to thank the organizer for allowing me to present the data on blood glucose changes and incident of new onset diabetes malages in Thai people living with HIV receiving dolatigravir. Okay, so emerging data from non-Asian countries show that integrated strand transfer inhibitors, including dolatigravir, can lead to hyperglycemia and diabetes mellitus. In our study using database in the US published last year, showed that in ART native population, those on INSTIs were 30% more likely to develop new onset diabetes mellitus or hyperglycemia compared to uh, people with HIV on non-INSTIs. Um, furthermore, there were case reports and case series of incident DM or hyperglycemia after DTG initiation or switching in African American and African patients um, that developed new, on, uh, new onset DM or hyperglycemia within one year after DTG use and some had severe hyperglycemia and even diabetes. A diabetic ketoacidosis leading to hospitalization. However, um, DTG could be maintained in around half of the reported cases with a more intense diabetes management. So with those data in mind, we studied changes in blood glucose level and the incident uh, of new onset DM in Thai people living with HIV on dolotigravir. Um, we collected data from both treatment experience and ARV naive people with HIV without diabetes who have been switched to or initiated dirty career from 2019 to 2022 at our center in Bangkok, Thailand. Um, blood glucose levels, lipid profiles, and other HIV related parameters were evaluated twice a year. New onset diabetic mellitus is defined as having two consecutive fasting plasma glucose more than 126 mg per deciliter or initiation of DM treatment or physician diagnosed diabetes mellitus. We calculated incident rate per 1,000 person year follow-up. Um, we compare differences in glucose levels and other continuous variables between groups using cross call valis test and chi-square for categorical data. OP value are two-sided and stati statistically significant were, was defined as P less than C, uh, 0 0.05. Um, among uh, 637 people with HIV, around 60% were male and 60% uh, were in prior in, in RTI users group and 30% in prior boosted PI and uh, 15% uh, uh, were ARV naive. The median age was around 50 years old with the um, median body weight of 60% or uh, uh, 60 kilogram. And from table here, ARV naive group uh, were younger and had less BMI than ART experience groups. Um, the median city for count were more than 500 in ART experience groups and Y ARV naive group as expected had the lower CD4 of 270. In ART experience group, HIV valid were supplied in 90% of participants. Uh, the PI group had a longer duration of ART use at a median of 20 years compared to 12 years within an RTI group. Uh, at baseline, uh, Higher glucose and lipid profiles were seen in ART experience groups compared to ART naives, and triglyceride level were higher in uh, boosted PI users. Um, during follow-up after initiating dolatigravir-based ART, people with HIV in the prior boosted PI group and ARV nav group had increases in fasting plasma glucose more than in the prior and in RTI users. At two years, there were an increase of approximately three to four milligram per deciliter compared to no increase in prior and in RTI group. 
Weight gain was significantly higher among ARV naive initiating the Higravir at approximately 7 kg than the switching group, which had gained approximately 2.7 kg in prior and in RTI users and um, 1.2 kg in prior PI users. However, as you can see from the uh, Y in the quartile range here, um, only a small number of participants actually reached the 18 and 24 months time point. So we expected to have a more complete data by the end of this year. Overall, at mid and follow-up period of one year, six patients met the criteria of new onset DM, resulting in an incident rate of 9.7 per 1,000 person years. However, if you use only one-time farting plasma glucose of more than 126 as the, criteria, as the criteria of the DM diagnosis, this will result in a much higher incident rate of 23 per 1,000 person years. So um, comparing to previously published data from our center, collecting data from 1996 to uh, 2015, our cohort had an incident rate of of uh, new onset DM of 7.6 per 1,000 person year. And you can see that the current incident rate of new onset DM is slightly higher. And in this uh, analysis, using they used uh, two times farting plasma glucose levels as the criteria diagnosis of DM. Another data from the Asia Pacific region or Taha study by Dr. Wynn here, uh, he used data from 23, uh, 2003 to 2017, showed that the incident rate of new onset DM is around 11 per 1,000 person year. And, it was, and this study used uh, one time fasting plasma glucose level as the criteria diagnosis. So anyway, again, comparing to 23 per 1,000 person year in our current study, it is quite interesting and alarming at the same time. Uh, however, our study has limitation. As we're still in an early phase of Dorotica we use, we have a small number of participants and there, there were not enough to analyze to find any associated factors and also couldn't really adjust for all the confounders. Uh, another limitation is that the follow-up time is still too short and only around half of our cohort have reached the one-year time point. So um, to conclude, uh, our study show that there, there are substantial rate of new onset diabetes mellitus in new dosigary users over a median uh, one year follow up period and new um, DTG users should be routinely monitored for diabetes or hyperglycemia, especially in the first year after the initiation and also lifestyle modification should be emphasized when you're studying using this uh, instees and further in investigation with larger particip participant numbers and longer follow-up period is needed. So um, I would like to thank our patient in HIFNAT 006 and our HIFNAT 006 study team and also my mentor and supervisor. Thank you.